today. Okay. I uh, and quickly to yeah. finish Newton's third law, stuff I wanted to uh, make sure you knew about. Right now. We did finish last lecture, um, and then we can review. All for you. Things like that. I'll ask you some quick questions on Newton's third law. See how we're understanding. Okay. And a few Thanks. other demos I really like on Newton's third law. Any questions right now? Okay. Let's wait just a moment. So don't, we're halfway through. Just stop. <laughs> I know I need one. <laughs> okay. Um, first thing, logistics wise. Uh, I sent another email out about uh, you know wonderful clickers. They keep informing me new stuff. But it seems basic now that I know it, but I think about it. Anyway, if you haven't looked on your U IDs uh, university official email, you have two about uh, your clickers and responses. Please follow those instructions about registering both and clearing out ID information. I didn't realize that in the software apps for responseware, you can enter ID information and that can be nice to up as well. So if you're using responseware, your software and your device, clear out any ID information. The ID comes through through your registra registering in the first place when you make your account. So you guys can do that too. I just checked half hour ago and there's still a whole lot of names at the bottom that aren't associated with an ID number. Once we can clear out this what I just mentioned, then we can work on those that are doing everything right and are still wrong. I still have all your responses. Don't worry, you'll get credit. One way or another. Like, you know yours. I don't know what you're talking about yet. <laughs> that one's confusing. But it's still functioning. I still see your responses. You still get to participate. We're, we're cool that way. Good. Well, first thing I want to do. It's quick to quit. So, pull them out. Again, this channel is 44. The session ID is here for the response for our users. While you're pulling those out and logging in, with a session ID number. Today, I do have, to, uh, what is it, a handful of demos that will show us and reiterate what we introduced about Newton's third law today. And then uh, we use, uh, utilize our car and board for the end of chapter five, where it talks about velocities, I mean vectors and components. Uh, I'm 99.5% confident I didn't put any question about that on the test. But we will. That's what we'll be covering after this. That's why it's at the end of chapter 5. So we'll cover it now. And it's, it's pretty simple what I need you to know. We'll do that also. Stalling anyway. This is how the test questions will be, and I, I, I want you to choose the answer that best, the, the option that best answers the question. I try really hard to make the test questions not confusing. I don't ever try to trick you on purpose. And I know sometimes it can be worded slightly better. I keep improving them and working. Um, but there's always one answer 
that will best answer the question. So if you're ever torn, like, oh, well, I thought it was 18.7326, and the only answer near that is 20, maybe somebody rounded their thing. Might as well tell you that now. Let's see. People are still responding. 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. People are still responding. 2, 1, and go look. Okay, two thirds of you thought C and a third thought B. <coughs> the answer is C. The question is the force that propels a heavy truck along the highway is provided by. Well, B is not a force. They're laws, so well, it's not B. <coughs> Good, you're thinking about Newton. It's involved, yes, but that's not a force. So that's not even an angle. C, the highway pushing back on the wheels. Uh, I know I discussed this with one student outside of class. The engine provides the energy and the power to make the car move, but ultimately the engine makes the wheels spin. And that's a force on the wheels. If you want the whole, in this case, truck to move, the truck has to push on the ground. And Newton's third law says it comes in pairs. The reaction is the ground pushes back on the truck where they're touching, which is the wheels. So that's why it's C. It's a Newton's third law example. Point one. So I was kind of confused. I picked B because you says it said propel. And to me, that would mean the engine is the tra engine transmission providing the force to move it forward. It wasn't talking about supporting it. I can understand C about pushing back on the wheels. But how does that help it? Be I'm glad you asked. And then, thank you. Glad you asked. That's exactly why I asked this question because I know a lot of people are thinking that the engine provides the energy and power to move to spin the wheels. That, in and of itself, would not move the car, the truck. Something has to push on the truck to make it move. A force. That's the ground pushing on the truck through the wheels. If you want that truck to move, some outside force has to push on it to change its motion. And the only thing outside of the truck is the ground pushing on it to propel it. Does that help? So if there was no ground, how would you propel it? The truck wouldn't work. The wheels would just spin. You'd have to propel it with a different mechanism, like a rocket. So, like those, I don't know, like when they do the tests, the dyno wheels. I'm unfamiliar with dyno wheels. The car manufacturers use them, and they put it on to test the vehicles that they've designed. You know, so they can run it for one or two hundred miles, and then, but it's not moving; it's just in place. So to actually propel it, you have to ground. It. Okay, that makes more sense now. Oh, you answered yourself. Good. But again, I, I emphasize the point that with Newton's third law, all forces come in pairs, equal in magnitude opposite in direction. And I like to add in, I mean that covers it, but I want to reiterate, that means those two forces are on different bodies. One's pushing on, in this case, the truck pushing on the ground, the ground pushing on the truck. They both can't cancel one object's motion out because they're not pushing on the same object. So if you didn't have the ground to push on, what do I do this one now? You probably all let go of a balloon, and you know what happens, right? What does the balloon do to the air inside of it? 
it expels it. It exerts a force on the air. The balloon pushes on the air. Out. So Newton's third law says, what's the air do? The air pushes back with the same force. Yeah, the balloon's not that heavy, but it's a lot heavier than the air. So who's going to end up accelerating more, the air or the balloon? Balloon. <laughs> Okay. Want me to go the other way next time? <laughs> Especially since the switch is over here. Don't put your clickers away. Come back. Okay, it's the same force. Force is mass times acceleration. You exert a force on the air or the balloon, they have certain masses. So that's, that'll, this equation is our guide to thinking. The air that has little mass <coughs> should get a big acceleration. The balloon that has, relatively speaking, a bigger mass will accelerate out. Less. It has uh, more inertia, more resistance to change, and so it won't be as effective as greatly. And it won't go as fast as the air is going. This works because the force is the same on the two objects. This one's called a rocket balloon. <laughs> and that's how, if you throw it back, I'll do it again. You can propel something without wheels on the ground. Because if this pushes on the air, the air pushes back on it. Now I want you to realize this would work in space if we could fill it full of air. In other words, it doesn't need the air in the room to push against. It's not like coming over here. I think and they've done that. Okay. I'm sorry, what? I think they've done that kind of test in the space shuttle or something. Oh, I'm sure they have done that in the space shuttle, yeah. You know, some people think, oh, if I push against the wall, it's going to push back on me, right? That's true. I'm going to propel myself. This is not working that way. This is pushing the air out. The air that came from the inside. So it didn't matter if there was air out here in the first place. That's how rockets can go in space. My life has been so much better since I got this pump. <laughs> Space, they don't use air. They use explosions and they, they shoot gas out. So that's what I'm going to do. I got some alcohol that I'm going to put inside this bottle. And maybe a little more. The lid's on the bottle, and it has a, a hole drilled in it, so it's a small opening. Liquid alcohol doesn't ignite. The vapor does, the gas. So that's why I was coating it, so it could evaporate. When I light it, it'll uh, catch fire, and that gas will be expelled out the back end. Rocket exerts force on gas. Gas exerts equal force back on the rocket, and that can propel it. I think it looks a little cooler with the lights out, so let's see, let's dim it again. Everybody ready? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for scaring. Well, there you go. So that's propulsion. More examples of Newton's third law. Okay. <coughs> Polling is open. Oh, yeah, see me in my balloon. Thank you very much.
Earth pulls on the moon. What does the moon do on the Earth? 10, 9, 8, 7, <coughs> 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And, uh, whoever was that last one, you barely made it. 80% claim B. That's a definitely a majority. You are correct. Somebody that didn't think that, please be brave. Tell us why you didn't think it was the same force. Please. 20% of you did. Well, I got there after eventually I thought that. Well, the first time, I guess, it was mm -hmm. D. Because I was just thinking the Earth pulls on the moon because the Earth is around the Earth. Mm -hmm. But, so then I was like, well, obviously that means it's less. But then I rethought it. So the, the mass difference played in yeah. in your head. You thought, oh, the moon's a lot less, so it must be less force. It can't pull as great. Yeah. And that's why I asked this. Does it make sense now why they are the same? It's, yeah, something can be huge, like the Earth, and something can be puny, like this. But remember, the Earth pulls on me with 177 pounds of force. I pull on the Earth with 177 pounds of force. That's Newton's third law, action, reaction, pair. Notice it's on two different bodies. But the mass comes into play with Newton's second law. The moon is affected more than the Earth because it has less mass, just like we did over there. Just like on the carts when you guys were pushing against each other, if somebody's more massive than the other one, they're affected differently for the same given force. Does that help? So, question. How does that account for the moon gradually pulling away from the Earth in its orbit? Is that what keeps it in that stable orbit? Is that, is Newton's law? Is that what keeps it stable in its orbit? Is that what keeps it stable in its orbit? Mostly, yes. It's going in a circle. And if something's changing direction, what's changing? Velocity. velocity. And if velocity's changing, we have a an, an acceleration. And that's coming into play. Okay. And I, we haven't talked about that. Okay. That's called centripetal acceleration. Polling is open. Discuss this. Had I asked you this from the very first one, I bet more of you would have missed it. But now I'm hoping I'm optimistic. answered by now than I thought. Mosquito runs into the windshield. <laughs> uh, the, the, the other third was not A or B. Good for you. <laughs> the, the force is the same. The truck seems massive and everything. And the truck wins. The mosquito dies. But yet the force between them is the same. Do you think that force is much, relatively speaking? No. No. The truck can handle that puny force, the mosquito can't. That was like me hitting the medicine ball. You know, if the truck ran into another truck, they'd both feel the same force. You agree? Mm -hmm. But that force would be huge. But running into the truck running into a mosquito, the force is the same between them, still agree? Mm -hmm. But that force is less than the two trucks running into each other because the mosquito can't exert that much force. 
but it's still more force than the mosquito can handle because he has very little mass. So he gets accelerated way too much for him to survive. Does that make sense? So again, force the same, but go back to Newton's second law, and the mass affects how it's accelerated and how it's going to change its motion. Yes. So that force is determined by uh, the smaller object flying on the big one, or is there just Most often, with the examples I've been given, yeah. Like me hitting that coffee filter. Sure, I have the potential to exert more force. Like when I, if I hit the wall, that's going to hurt my hand more than if I hit a feather, you know, doing the same thing. Maybe that's a more drastic example so you can realize there would be more force involved with me hitting the wall, even though I did the same swing to a feather. It's because the feather can't retaliate, can't push back with the same force I have the potential to provide. So it will be a lesser force. But it will still be the same force between the two. I think there was another one I wanted. No, nope, that was it. Okay. I set this one up, so let's do it. This is called a fan part. We used it before, a different version. So it blows air in that direction. So when I let go of it, what do you think will happen? Push the Put it on. Yeah, you think it will go that way? It should be like the rocket. If it pushes the air that way, what's the air do to it? Okay, which way is it accelerating? <coughs> now it is. is it, which way is it accelerating now? Don't be fooled. Which way is the force on the cart? That way. Which way is the air pushing on the cart? It's always pushing on the cart that way, isn't it? So the acceleration is always that way. This is like tossing the ball up in the, in the air. You can see its velocity changes. It should. It's accelerating. For uh, right here. Right here. What's the net force on it? Zero. Zero. No, no. <laughs> it's still uh, whatever the force was, it's constant. Because the fan, the blade's still moving, so it's blowing air this way, and the air is pushing back on the cart, still. So the net force is not zero at that point. Then the acceleration. Say again? Is there within the acceleration, perhaps? What's the acceleration at that point? No. Oh, it's always in motion. No, it's just in What's its velocity at that point? Uh, zero. Zero. Yes. Uh, would the energy be the same? Like for instance. Yeah, this has been putting out the same energy output. Yeah. Power output. You've heard those terms. That would be true. You all get that? That right at that point, the force isn't zero. The acceleration is not zero. The velocity is. Good. All right. Now, if I put this fan sail on here. And I'm going to exert a force on the cart by blowing on it. So my air, hot air, is going to push on the cart. Which way will it go? Away from you. See, there's a genius. So now, if I turn on the uh, fan cart's blades, which way will it go? Same way. Oh, what the heck? Here, get another point. You probably won't put them away, though, didn't you? Take that if you put them in. Just... Who thinks it'll go that way? Raise your hand. Two. Three. 
Okay, who thinks it'll go that way? More. Who thinks it won't move? Who hasn't voted? Who doesn't care? <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> All right. Doesn't move. Let's look at the forces on the cart. <coughs> Okay, if it's this is blowing air this way, isn't it? So this exerts a force on the air that way. Force on air. So what's the air do? It pushes back. Pushes back on the curve. <coughs> so force air on cart. This is cart on air. All right. What other force? We got the sail. Okay. The air pushes on the sail, doesn't it? So there's a force there. That's the air on cart. Because the sail is connected to the cart. What else? What's the reaction to this? Yeah, the air on the sail, so the sail pushes back on the air. So I'm going to draw that one back up here, and we have sail slash cart on air. I separated them on purpose, because if you want to know how the air is moving, you look at the forces on the air. If you want to know how the cart's moving, look at only the forces on the cart. We got one pushing it this way, and we got one pushing it that way. Since they're caused from the same thing, they're the same force. And so the net force is zero. The acceleration is zero. It's zero, zero. And that's why it didn't move. the uh, net acceleration on the ball? Net acceleration. Zero. Good. What two forces are acting on it? It's weight. You know how to find weight? Force is mass times acceleration. And the acceleration due to gravity is what causes weight. So if you want to know somebody's weight in Newtons, that's what you do. What if I give you the weight and you need to find the mass in kilograms? Can you do it? You would divide by a G. Good, good. What's the reaction force to its weight? Does it support force? Two votes for support force. That's incorrect. What's the, my hand is the support force, right? And so if you think of it as my hand exerting a force on the ball, its weight is the earth accelerating a force, accelerating force. exerting a force on the ball. So a re an action-reaction pair can't be on the same body. So what's the reaction to its weight? Let's just it down here. The ball pulling up on the earth. Earth pulls on ball, ball pulls on earth. That's the reaction. What's the reaction to the normal support force? Me on the ball? The ball, on the, the ball on me. Opposite body. The reaction to my weight is me pulling the air. Remember those action reaction pairs that you just kind of flip them. Air on cart, cart on air. Me on earth, earth on me. Me on ball, ball on me. They have to be on opposite bodies. What? That, that's why. Why is this not moving? 
because the net force is zero. What is the net force now? Right idea. That's due to gravity. That was the acceleration. You would need to know the mass. It's uh, 124 grams, so that's 0.124 kilograms. If I multiply that by 10, that's about a newton. Around <laughs> 1.2-ish newtons. So yeah, the net force on it now is 1.2 newtons. You see that? Because the only force on it, the air resistance on this is negative. The only force on it is, is weight. What's the reaction force now? What's the only force acting on the ball now? Gravity. Gravity. It's weight. So what's the reaction force? It pulling on the earth. Doesn't matter whether I'm holding it or it's in the air. That's always the reaction to its weight. Because earth's pulling on it, it pulls on earth. If I'm seeming redundant, I hope not. <laughs> but I know I'm, I am. Because it takes a while to, oh, yeah, yeah, we said that. I think I did. I hope you are. How do you guys feel? Now, let's just do one more question now. Because worst case, I don't need to affect your the one with the cart and the horse pulling it. The person sitting on it, and there's also like a rope between the horse and the cart. Yeah, that was problem eight on your homework, which is due tonight. Your homework is due tonight. That was a similar to this, which is why I do this. <laughs> so I'd ask, refer to a horse cart system and consider only horizontal forces, kind of like we did here. In the horizontal direction, how many forces are on the cart? So we had a cart and a horse. Now I'm simplifying. <laughs> All right. In the horizontal direction, how many forces are exerted on the cart? He said two. Can you name them? What you're thinking? So yeah, the horse pulls on the cart. Yep. The cart pulls back. And what pulls was pulling back? The cart. The cart's pulling back on the horse? That is true. The cart is pulling back on the horse. But I do that one over here because that's the force on the horse. This one's the force on the cart. That's the action-reaction pair. They're not on the same body. Are, is there another force at work? The earth pulling on the cart. The earth pulling on the cart. Good. Good. The question uh, said we could only have to worry about horizontal forces in this case, but you're right. Friction. Friction. All right. Which way does it act here? Well, right. And is that on the cart? Yes. Or on the ground? Friction acts on the cart. Friction does act on the cart. And then the ground. But if it acts on the ground, the ground is like, yeah, there's a re that's the reaction reaction there there. So you have one that way. And then a similar thing with the horse between his feet. So, how many forces are on the cart? You do count friction. That's right here. That's the ground pushing back on the cart. The cart pushes on the ground, but that's affecting the ground <coughs> on the cart. Cart pushes on the ground. That affects the ground. The reaction force is the ground pushes back on the cart. That affects the cart, and that's a force we want to we're, we're dealing with. So yeah, I've given you an answer to that one. There are two forces on the cart. Do you see that? Do you see the action reaction pairs? Excellent. Uh, let's see. What's the net horizontal force? on the cart. So, well, I'll help you out with that. The net force sum the forces acting on the cart. Remember they have direction, so if one's pulling one way and one's pulling the other, you're going to add these, right? Who, who do you think is bigger? The one on the left or the one pulling to the right? To the right. To the right. 
you know, we could define to the right positive. So if we called that, I don't remember what they called it, but let's say big F and little f, then you'd get something like that, wouldn't you? Because the difference there would be positive and give you your net force, your net acceleration to the right. <laughs> Equals to one more power. That's good. All right. Other questions? This is your chance if you had things that were confusing you? Okay, if you don't, that means I'll just feel better. <laughs> I'll either think you're shy or I'm just a great teacher. No. Are you liking the book? Really? Good. If one, if you think of one, raise your hand, okay? Well, let me go ahead and do the board then. See if somebody thinks of something. Oh yeah, my, my notes. Does a moving ball possess force? Does a moving ball possess force? Yes or no? Yes is? No's? Well, a whole lot of you aren't playing. <laughs> yeah, that's why I got the clicker. <laughs> Does a moving ball possess force? If you read the chapter well, no, it does not. Force is not something something can possess. It can possess mass. It has mass. It's made up of stuff. And thus inertia. And not force. It's like the uh, potential to do something. We're going to study in the uh, upcoming chapters about energy. And that something can possess. We like to say in normal terms, it possesses energy. It has the potential to do work. Work is a form of energy. Transfer of energy. And if something has that energy, then it can exert forces on things. But forces are interactions. Interactions. And that's why they always come in pairs. But don't think of a, an object as being able to possess force. No, no, no. It might have the ability to do work and thus push on something, interact with it. But it's not something like it owns. And I think that'll help you all your life, truthfully. I have a question. So are you trying to say that force, so force is an interaction between objects? Correct. It's an interaction. Absolutely. So the end of this chapter is uh, discussing vectors just a little more. And we are already kind of worked on it. Do you remember how the buggy's moving and the cart's moving? You'd add the two components together. Or if they're going in opposite directions, you'd still add them, but one's positive and one's negative. Um, well, this is getting at what if two things are pulling or moving in not the same line of action? In other words, one's going to the left, and the other is, say, going towards you. then you get a little relative motion again. Horizontally, this has a constant velocity. And so it moves this way, just like we've been discussing before. If I give this a horizontal velocity, it just happens to be in that direction, towards you guys, then it moves that way, and things are like we thought, and we've discussed. When I combine them and do them together, relative to the ground, or the table, the car no longer moves only this way, does it? It moves this way, diagonally. Let's do it again. It's just horizontally, but now it's diagonally. And these can go in any you know, kind of funky direction. Okay, but that's because the board is on um, is another horizontal shift, but in a different direction, right? Yeah, they're both horizontal. One we'd say is like in the x-axis, and one's in the y-axis. 
uh, perpendicular to each other. Okay. Yeah, so it would make like a, a triangle because it's the, the difference is the angle of it would go to the angle that's between the two. Yes, it would go to the, the angle that they are. That's what I'm going to draw right now, Brian. Good. So if this vector represents the force or the velocity of this car, and this represents it of the board, then the result is, make a parallelogram. The book draws these well. And the thing's going to move diagonally. And you saw that. It, moves, it still moves this way, but it also moves that way at the same time. And that's what they're trying to get at, to realize when things aren't, are in more than one direct direction or one dimension. You just play this game. You look at the individual dimensions. Here's one dimensional. Here's one dimensional. Together, they make two dimensional. Two dimensional problems are just two separate one-dimensional problems. What if the car was going slower and had a smaller vector and the board was going faster? Same game. You connect, it's going diagonally, but it'd be going more up than to our left. What if they're not perpendicular to each other? You still make a parallelogram. Make that parallel to that side, and make the other side parallel to that side. That's how you can play that game. And your gut tells you this. If somebody's pushing on you that way, at the same time somebody else is pushing on you that way, which way are you going to move? So you get a force this way and a force that way. Which way are you going to move? Diagonally. Diagonally that way, yeah. These are called, you can call components. Um, Let's say we're pulling along a force pulling a block horizontally on the floor. That's what we've been doing up to now. It makes sense. Everything still applies if you now pull up on the thing. It's still going to slide across the floor, isn't it? But with less acceleration. You can uh, make some little axes or whatever. If you think of that as your x-axis and that as your y-axis, horizontal and vertical. This thing, if it moves horizontally, then we just look at the force that's pulling it in the horizontal direction. That will determine how far it goes horizontally. Do you see magnitude-wise the scalar component of this vector? Do you remember the lengths represent the magnitude? This, one, this one's longer, the one pulling up. This one's shorter, so it's less force. We won't need to calculate these. That would involve trigonometry. And if somebody's interested, I'm happy to tell you, but I won't require it of you to figure out what value this is. But I want you to realize that this is called a component of the actual pulling force. And that would determine how far it goes horizontally. Likewise, you can drop a perpendicular to the y-axis to determine how much force is being pulled up on it. See that it's less? <coughs> if you want to see how it's moving vertically, then we only look at the component of the force that's vertical on it. That one would help us determine the support force, wouldn't it? Because if this force is already pulling up on the block a little, and its weight is pulling down, the difference is all the table has to support it with. It's weights pushing on the table, but you're helping lift it up just a little. So the difference is all the support force would need to be. Does that make sense? Uh, again, I'm not testing you on this on this exam, but this will come up in the next chapters, especially within chapter 10 with projectile motion. And uh, they expose it to you here in chapter 5. Let's give you one more example. That's all we got time for. You saw some uh, examples of some painters. You know?
on the, on the ledge. Our author used to be a painter. And he's on a board suspended by two ropes. You had a homework question about this. Resolution of forces. If he weighs so much, his weight, fill that weight one. And the board weighs so much, whoosh, weight two. What's the total downward force? The sum. So what must the total upward force be if he's not accelerating? Yeah, the, the sum of these two forces. Up. Ah, what's providing those forces? The ropes. There's a tension here, tension one, and there's a tension here, tension two. So the sum of those must be balancing those. There's no net force, no net acceleration. Could he be moving at a constant velocity? With these forces balanced. Could he be moving at a constant velocity with these forces balanced? You know this. I know you do. If the forces are balanced, what's the net force? If the, if the net force is zero, what's the net acceleration? Zero. And if the net acceleration is zero, are you changing your motion? No. Is the velocity changing? No. Does it have to be zero? No, it's just not changing. So yes, you can be moving at a constant velocity and still have the acceleration and net force zero. I'll warn you now on the test, I am not trying to trick you, but read them carefully. Am I asking for velocity or acceleration? Some people get those confused. And you know already, if the acceleration is zero, what's the velocity doing? Staying constant. If it says, somebody's moving at a constant velocity, what do you automatically know? Acceleration is zero. If the net acceleration is zero, the net force is zero. If there's forces acting on that object, they must be balanced to go constant. Wink, wink. <laughs> so what if uh, Joe Painter walks to our right over here? Does anything change? <clears throat> Say it louder. The tension in rope two. The tension in rope two does what? Yeah, it increases. What do you think happens to the tension over here? Decreases. That's true. What do you think the sum does? Still stays the same. So you know, if you're hanging from uh, Olympic rings, you know, like this. Uh, whatever, you get the idea. <laughs> uh, there, the tensions would be balanced. But what if you shift your weight? What's going to happen to the tensions in the rope? They're going to shift too, yeah. But the, the, if you're not moving up or down, the total up must balance the total down. And I guess I draw more escape. Okay. Last minute, last chance for questions. All right, homework's due tonight for, for chapter five.